Everybody, welcome to another episode of Yala. Ba, 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 ba. Your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what, Terence? Good old humor. Good old humor, man. Yeah. Good old humor. It's the Monday, Monday of a of the of a new week. How was your mm. weekend, man? Uh it was pretty good, man. I think uh uh, which is related to the topic we're talking about later. I mm. think uh, because there was a very, very big K-pop band in town, mm. uh, it basically drew away around 50,000 people per night to the National Stadium area. Mm. So a lot of other places that, that you know, I visited during the day and all that weren't as, didn't feel as crowded as it normally would be. Like. But weren't you like sweating like crazy? Because this weekend, especially Saturday, I right, was like record temperatures. Correct, you never go yeah, frolic like... in the public fountains or public libraries, eh? Mm, not really, no. I was mostly in aircon all the way. In couldn't aircon, I see. Yeah, my my privileged, my yeah, privileged yeah. ass can't take being outdoors. Aircon inequality, stay. man. Aircon, aircon inequality, it, and yeah, everything. The the one business I know, like there were reports also, is booming is air condition, <laughs> air conditioner sales of air conditioners. Uh. I it, probably, I thought, to, uh, what, what I've been hearing is just shortages uh, all around uh, of new aircons and all. Shortages like, new of new air cons. Yeah, because people now realizing they really need the aircons. Uh, so, you know, and then they're trying to fix the aircons and also, yeah, there's a bit of a backlog uh, as with everything mm. else, right? Yeah. But I, yeah. I realized like, um, you know, that one thing you always hear like Singapore is a green country and trees everywhere. I think it's only when you travel, you realize, hey, actually, we do have a lot of trees in almost every place and the trees do help mm. with the weather, man. They do, they do, yeah. They so help yeah, yeah, you so much. You're saying this because you just came back from Penang, which our yeah. last episode, uh, Harish, was uh, doing a hybrid work trip uh, to Penang. Yes. Uh, where he worked and forced everyone who traveled with him to work. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, my wife, it was part of a very de- democratic discussion with my wife about how we will do some work on the trip. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 If, you can address. Yeah. You will address it in Parliament. <laughs> we'll address it in Parliament two months from now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is nonsense. This fear mongering. Uh, no fear mongering. Yeah. You deserve to have your ass pockmarked, Terence. Mm, it was a very yes. mutual discussion. But yes, it is. It is after coming back from Penang. For anyone who's been to Penang, uh, Georgetown, there's a. I mean, there's a lot of shop houses and low rise buildings, but not mm. much vegetation, la. And mm. oh my god, you feel the heat just hit you in the face the moment you step out, man. Whereas in Singapore, so it, was, it was very hot in Penang. Right? It was the, fucking the... hot, dude. Oh man, wow. Yeah, and it's the kind where I mean, because it's also not uh the most windy place. Mm. Uh, Penang, it is an island, but Georgetown with all the the buildings uh quite clustered together, it's not the the windiest place, like. So I don't know mm. how it was in Singapore. I can imagine it being hot as hot as hell. So, but yeah, 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 man, yeah, man. But did you uh, go and take the? Do you did you go and take the those touristy photos with the graffiti nah, nah, on the nah, wall? Nah. And we all didn't. That? We didn't. We you didn't. Uh. Like we tried to do the West Anderson challenge, like, which is quite fun. Oh like. God, <laughs> my God, come on, man! That's like <laughs> you know, like TikTok to the max. Eh? But I mean, as in, I've seen so much of it. I'm like, it's so. I'm so bored of it, really. But it's one of the trends that when even when I watch them, like, hey, actually, this is a cool trend, lah. Like uh, it's one of the trends that I find tolerable, and it's a fun couple thing to do. Okay, Terrence. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. No, I okay. give that to you. Any time you have, you tell me that you're trying to have fun as a couple. I'm like, okay, I'd rather you do that than than be sitting in some cafe working. Shut the up. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm felt a... so bad doing the podcast on Friday because I was like, oh God, I hope Harish is not thinking that I, I want him to do this podcast out there. No, yeah. no, because it's also just trialing out something new. La. You know why mm-hmm. we don't have kids now? If mm-hmm. we want to go spend a week abroad or something and and do it more often, being able to yeah. work remotely is kind of a nice thing. Right? Mm, no, no, it's good, it's good. So, so you went you went out and, and experienced these things. So yeah, did, you, did, you, did you guys end up finishing the video? Yeah, we did, but in the end, it turned to a video of fails, lah. Because we tried to, <laughs> but we were not. It it was fun because we weren't taking it too seriously. So, so yeah, lah. I think uh, my wife is currently like just editing it and and enjoying the edit. You know what's the other thing I can't stand about that challenge as well? What it kind of, it kind of goes against the whole idea of holding your phone vertically and shooting video, right? The whole point of like when you talk about Wes Anderson's visual style and all that. A lot of yeah. it is about symmetry. It's about, you know, the white landscape. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. One figure in a very white landscape. So the the landscape almost becomes another character in in, in what you see, right? Yeah, correct, correct. Whereas 
when you film vertical video, at the end of the day, the human in the middle is just such a such a huge chunk of the of the frame that it kind of takes away from the idea of it being a Wes Anderson thing, like, right? Of course, mm. it, there, there's more to it than just about symmetry and all that. I understand, but I'm just saying that the medium itself seems to be uh, a big fuck you to to the, the idea of what Wes Anderson's visual style is, like, you know. So, Terence, have you been at a dinner before where you're perfectly enjoying this wine? <laughs> And like, you're just thinking, oh, this wine is so good. And the person next to you says, hey, that wine uh, is fucked up. Man. The grapes, right, uh, uh, are not uh, two mm smaller than these grapes in the other part of France. And it's a big fuck you yeah. to the farmers in France. Because you know this what? is not an actual grape. Harish, we are, you and I are both looking at mirror when we talk about <laughs> these kind of things to each other. That's the reason we're here. If we are not here to criticize what everyone else likes, then what are we? What are we on this earth for? You know, right? that is true, la. That is true. You know, you know. Speaking, speaking of like a core motivation for for why we do the things we do, I also mm. realized that yesterday, fourteenth May, was nine years now since nine I since. started. Uh, like since we started working on Ministry of Funny full time. Oh, because wow. I remember fourteenth yeah. May, twenty fourteen. Uh, I went to the office that we were working out of for the first time after mm. leaving my job and I was like, okay, we, had, we have no idea what the fuck we're doing but we're going to do it anyway. Nine years now. Uh, you know, I'm kind of, I was kind of amazed how you always remember the the exact date that you, you know, whether it's you started working on this and all that. Lah. Of course, mm. of course, I'm a bit of a, maybe I'm a bit of a non-sentimental uh, jerk that way, lah, right? Mm. But I'm always amazed because I cannot remember these things. But somehow every year, almost every year, you do bring bring up this statistic. Mm. Like this is I mean, how many yeah. years since I started and all that. Uh, I think yeah, I it's, a, be... it's a bit, it's, it's quite quite psychopath, psychopath kind of behavior. Like, no, right? no, 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 no. It, it's like a birthday, <laughs> la, dude. Okay, on one hand, you are totally fine remembering the birthdays of humans. Okay? Ministry of Funny is like a human and it deserves a birthday. It's a ninth birthday. So don't take that away. <laughs> Coming from Harish talking about how birthdays are important, you you just want to reach out across the screen and slap his face now. This is the guy who like, I don't know for how many, 30 over years of his life, didn't even want to tell anybody his birthday because he's, he doesn't want anyone to celebrate it. And then when I tell him, hey, it's kind of inconsistent with the fact that you remember every single year or the exact date that you started work on something. This tells you why I keep talking about that, going to Penang and why... And why work versus enjoying Vinang is like that's why it's a big See, part of the discussion. I'm like, no, Terence, you're this projecting yourself. It. You're projecting yourself. And one thing that did help is a few people messaged me on LinkedIn. They're like, oh, congratulations on your work anniversary. Oh, ho, 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 ho. yeah. So people then I was message like, oh. you on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, then I was like, oh, because I realized that when I put Ministry of Funny under work experiences, I did put 14th May. So every 14th mm-hmm. May, LinkedIn auto posts something like, uh, congratulate Harish on his work anniversary or something. So it is a mm-hmm. date that I do remember, but at the same time, mm-hmm. people uh, 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 ping me about it. Uh. But even then, Terrence, <laughs> you just said that 30 plus years, I didn't appreciate birthdays and now I have a bit more of an appreciation. So mm-hmm. I also have a bit more appreciation for these sort of dates. Lah. What? A- okay, okay. I don't understand what you're getting at, Terrence. I feel you're projecting yourself onto the, 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 the way I go about these kind of things. No, no, Which no. It's okay, line, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's related to uh, the first topic in some way also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I, yeah, I, I only am just, yeah, uh, pretty, I, I say I'm pretty amazed by it. And the truth is, I think we all uh, can and should do a better job of like, uh, you know, celebrating little milestones uh, that, that we get, get through at work. Mm. And uh, I do, I do look back at those days when, you know, we were really much younger and just, uh, I pretty much told Harish, hey, this is, this is your, your chance to do it, lah, you know? Uh, or, and then at that time, you know, this was pre-HBO, pre any of those things that came along, right? So it was mm-hmm. a very huge risk to take at that point in time. So maybe for you, it, you know, it does, it does, it has a much more momentous uh, feeling to it. Lah. But for me, yeah, lah, it, to me, it was like, okay, I, I, I Maybe I didn't attach that much significance to the date, la, but uh, well, I think it's okay to celebrate it. But I just wish that... <laughs> Thank you, Terrence. Thank yes, you for yes. approving my celebrations. In fact, Thank if, you, I, yeah, if, if you. anything, I would rather that we, we went all the way, la, you know, and then like did like a... Like, like, did like a proper party or something about it. La. To me, that would be, that'd be cool. La, yeah. Maybe 10 years. La, maybe 10 years. 10 I mean, years. we Is are almost 10 years. Really? We're, I mean, next year will be 10 years. La. 
Because mm, yeah, we never done that kind of like, oh, this is the anniversary or a birthday of MOF or Yadabad or anything like that, right? Yeah, I mean, our 400th episode is coming up in three episodes and we haven't spoken anything about what we're going yeah, to do to celebrate. Yeah. But that's the thing about us. Like, we always say, oh, let the work do the talk, the talking, like, right? Ah, but and, Terrence, that's not how influencers roll, like, Terrence. Exactly. When you get exactly. those floating high, uh, helium balloons, you know, those, those ones with numbers, yeah, put it yeah, in yeah. the background... Uh, and and just say just let take uh, like two thousand Instagram photos. And then got a theme for it la, like a yellow color theme. Everyone comes dressed in yellow and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yellow, black, and white la. Yeah, yeah. And then we do an office tour and things like that. Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. Correct. Maybe. Correct. Correct. <laughs> correct. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> no, it's. I think. I think it's apt because today we are talking about you know uh, a bit of extravagance la, right in, yeah, yeah. In a bit, a bit of your uh, alleged uh, extravagance yes 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 but before yeah. all that we, we do want to do our normal plug and what is that Um, it is that if you've been listening to this podcast or if you've listened to this podcast uh, recently and find that oh it makes you smile it makes you cackle a little bit it'd be great if you could share it with one person who may not have heard of us or may not have listened to this podcast mm, mm. Uh, that's sure. how the podcast grows so and we want to keep growing la. Yeah. Yeah, man. But cool. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Before before we, you know, ride out into the sunset. Yes. Uh let us jump into this first topic, which is yes. you know, a lot about riding out. Yeah. It's a it's a little dicey. It's a little speculative. It's still mm. in development. Mm. Um, but it is the topic regarding uh <laughs> where uh, minister, uh ministers Shanmugam and Vivian Balakrishnan uh live. And how they the rental amounts they pay for that, and what the whole process was for them to get those homes, like. And this was started mm. by a post by Kenneth Jai Ratnam mm. uh, about a week ago, um, where he kind of questioned that. Uh, and you can you can argue, you can feel however you want to feel about his post, but basically mm. he was saying they live at these two locations in Singapore. They are black and white houses, con- uh, classified as GCBs. So how mm. can a minister, no matter how much they earn, afford to live in a place like that lah, uh, by mm. when, when they're renting it out? Mm-mm. So his blog post was not too long, um, but people started talking and last Friday, the Singapore Land Authority, who oversees these black and white houses uh, be, be, with regards to rentals or commercial properties, they responded with a with a short, short note as well and they said it will be discussed in parliament in July 2023. Mm. So, mm. so, 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 I mean, there's a lot of speculation. Uh, yeah. We are just basing it off whatever we can find in the public realm. But what, mm. what made you want to talk about this? Uh? I mean, is there anything else in politics to, that, that is bigger than this? This is, uh, you know, usually you don't associate road names with like politics as much, uh, right? Mm. Uh, you say ten Downing Street, or or maybe maybe in other places it's ten Downing Street, or um I don't know the more like I I think the White House address is something Pennsylvania Avenue or something like right. Mm. But in Singapore, the most talked about address in the past four or five years has been none other than Oxley Road, la, right? Yes. In politics, that's all everyone has been talking about the last few years in relation to a place that is has political implications, la, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, and now it seems like ride out road. Uh, yeah, it's pronounced ride out, right? Ride out. Road. I believe so. Or ride yeah, out. Ride out road. Or ride out. Ride out. Ride out. Ride out, yeah, yeah. out road will be uh yeah the site of a lot of uh discussions to come. Uh. That's why I thought it's something that we have to talk about, even though we know that there will be more information coming out in July, which is still a yeah. month or two from now. Yeah. Yeah. So so essentially, it is two uh properties along ride out road. Uh, one rented by Shamugam and one rented by uh, Vivian Balakrishnan, where Kenneth Jayaratnam just did some some back of the envelope calculation, saying that okay, these properties are huge. Um, mm. Even if you assume a rental of so and so amount per square foot, these places are huge. So how can anyone afford it on a salary of two million? La? And when he mm. says huge, right? These places are fucking huge. Mm. Um, I mm. think. Uh, based on on info available from SLA, the total uh land size for three properties twenty. I mean, we three? can see the number. No, three it, properties. Yeah, as in I think they two. they they didn't differentiate between 
uh, each of those properties. So the, okay. the number is applicable to these three properties. So even if you average it out, um, mm. it's huge. Line. I guess we can say the number, lah, right? It's, it's yeah, out yeah, there. Of course. Yeah. So it's 24 and 26 uh, right out road. So mm. no, 31, 31 and 26, sorry. 31 mm. and 26. Mm. So together with 30, 24, these three properties apparently cover 525,000 square feet. Mm, yeah. If you look on Google Earth, if you look on the Street View, it is massive, lah. Yeah. Um, I think. I think. Uh, just can can I, Jerry, right now put in a back of the envelope calculation where a football field typically is around fifty thousand square feet, lah. So this is uh the properties eleven are football fields about ten to eleven football fields, lah. Right. Uh, yeah. Although although I did look up Google and and Google did say that. Football fields can uh, the typical ones that are used by clubs are usually up to around seventy thousand square feet. So it could be fewer, like maybe eight to ten, like eight, like seven or eight football fields. But still, seven to eight football fields. Yeah. Yeah, my Terence. <laughs> <laughs> if I told yeah. you my house is yeah between eight to eleven football fields. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a that's a fucking huge number, like. It's a fucking yeah, yeah. huge number. I think so, it's important because it's it's when you just tell a number, it's very hard to envision what yeah, it looks yeah, like. Exactly. When we exactly. think about it in the size of football fields, which you know, at some point or another, you probably have seen or or even ran on one. Yeah, imagine having to run eleven foot or ten football fields to get from one end of your house to another. Yeah. So so I mean, the one thing to note is that um. So okay, his post. Like even reading it, I feel like okay, that is very very speculative, lah. Mm, because mm, first mm. of all, I I don't know whether this is considered like uh doxing um of of where they live and all. Mm, but now, mm. I mean, even SLA has put it out in a notice, which is the only reason why we are we are open to sharing. But it is the mm. residences of of two people in very high up positions, lah. Yeah. So reading that was like uh okay, that's one thing. And then I was curious also like um the rental rates because I think uh, last year or at some point there was one GCB that uh, in Queen Astrid Park that fetched I think $200,000 of rental per per month la. Mm. and this was actually raised in parliament by mm. none other than Leong Man Wai um, asking about you know that one in particular and how many colonial black and white houses exceed 20,000 square feet what is the land size current lease duration monthly rental uh, and Shamugam mm. himself responded saying that one thing to take note is that the rental of private property GCBs is very different from SLA property GCBs. Mm, um, mm, because mm. SLA overseas, there's this bunch of black and white buildings. Not all are GCBs, but they it was built in colonial times and all that. And they are considered la- state property. La. So they are rented mm. out at, I believe, at a rate that tends to be lower than private property. Mm. Mm. Um, but but even then, and then there are stats you can download from SLA that talk about like the the properties that are available for black and white houses and the rental numbers and all that, and you get you get a range lah. You get anything up to like sixty or even ninety six k a month based on the mm. size. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, but that was also available up till twenty twenty one. We all know yeah. rental prices have gone up. So. So one question he did put out is like, what was the process? Mm, um, mm. How did they get it? And then SLA responded with with certain things like saying that Shamugam, um, he, he made an offer through an agent that was higher than the guide rent, which was mm. not disclosed to him apparently. Um, and Vivian Balakrishnan was the only bidder. No, he was mm. the highest bidder. Mm, mm, mm. And the property he got was vacant for more than six years and the property that Shamugam got was vacant for more than four years. So, so those those were the things that were mentioned. But when you were reading this, how are you thinking about it? Because ultimately it is a claim, right? Mm-mm. Um I mean, let me first ask you, Harish, what is the point of all this? Like, why do you think this is newsworthy? You know? Uh everyone knows our ministers are high paying, high earning individuals, right? So yeah. is it an issue that that Oh, a uh, high earning minister cannot stay in an expensive property? Is that is that why people are getting upset here? I think like right now anything related to housing is going to mm. be a hot topic. Mm. Um because there's, there's so much news these days of rentals of 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 government housing prices. It's been talked about so much in parliament. There is this on like recurring theme of like how oh the people in power are disconnected from the lay people on the street. 
So mm. when this comes up, at first I also was thinking that, I mean, it's it's a claim by an opposition uh, leader who hasn't featured in the news for a while. Mm. Why is it getting so much attention to the point that SLA has to respond? So that's my take, but what about you? Uh? Um, yeah, I mean, everything housing related is a hot button issue. And uh, I think it's because, yeah, the, the size of these properties are so huge. Uh, when you juxtapose with uh, the layman or the person on the streets, their struggle in getting a, a BTO flat, like, right? And having to mm. wait a number of years. Um, that's where this juxtaposition um, makes it something that a lot of people are, are comparing to one another, like. The fact that a minister is able to is is can afford and is able to rent um, such a huge property and all, mm. while at the same time in Parliament where we're telling you know the government is telling people that they are monitoring the situation and housing rental prices and all these things are very being very closely monitored and trying to control uh, inflation plus also trying to fix the BTO supply issue and things like that lah right yeah so it's not a good look lah right I think yeah. it's not a good look um. The, when when you know when government officials of such such a uh, high rank uh seem to be so yeah yeah I've, I've not not seem to be are uh, clearly you know um uh, are completely uh very very far away from whatever problems people on the ground are facing like, right mm-hmm. it's it's a different issue of trying having to of affording a thirty thousand dollar a month rent. Versus trying to you know apply for your first public housing uh, unit lah, you know, so that's why I think this this it's a, it's a yeah you can tell for for the media and all it's a very juicy story lah, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But at the same time, it's I I still ask myself lah, is it is it wrong for someone who holds public office to necessarily stay in a you know whether it's a landed property or expensive property or anything? Because you know Shamugam even before politics, he was a very he, he was a very successful lawyer already, right? Making mm. a lot of money and all. And he probably could have made even more if he had stayed uh, out of politics and stayed in, in his practice. Mm. So should you begrudge him uh, for, for wanting to, you know, uh, whether it's uh, live a bit more luxuriously than, than the rest of the rest of us? Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I was, I, I agree with what you're saying because, I mean, as much as Housing is a hot button topic. I mean, we have spoken about it. Mm. Um, yeah, this one it feels a bit intrusive, la. Mm. But um, but again, you know, you are a politician, you are a public figure. Mm. It's just not a good look. So then it mm. becomes a thing mm. like if it's not a good look, doesn't mean it's wrong, right? Yeah. Um, I guess you know just the the whole notion, la, Here are these two politicians who have been in power for quite a while, um, mm. quite high up there neighbors, you know? Mm, <laughs> they're like, hey, mm, Vivian B, what's up, man? Mm, and then, you know, like, they just go for walks together or something. It just puts these images in your mind. Um, mm. And also, the rental of, even if it's 30k a month, I don't know, man, you look at the houses, if yeah. it was 30k a month, part of my mind is like, why didn't I find 29 other friends and yeah. we all go and live there? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's huge. Yeah, 30k would still be like less than $1,000 per square foot. Which is yeah. by even private property in Singapore. I mean, even for any kind of small condo or anything, it's easily over a thousand dollars per square foot, really, like, right? Yeah. So you look at this, and when I say huge, right? Even on Google Earth, the picture of the gate, it's like maybe I don't know a hundred meters to the house. Mm. Like, mm. not kidding. Yeah. So it, it just feels like wow. Well, okay, then then what is the actual price? And mm. and and it, then it just puts all these questions in your head, lah. But mm. the one thing also we have to be cautious is like, you look at uh, Kenneth Jairatnam's article, the pictures he used for the interior of the house mm. is not a black and white house. Mm, mm, you know? Mm. And that's where it goes down the line of like, wow, okay, this, 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 how factual is this? Um, mm. It's, it's not, it's really playing to, to, how you say, uh, what, what he knows will, will trigger people. Because uh, the mm. picture of the house is like chandeliers and, and wooden, like, it looks like it, it it's either uh, an artist's uh, impression or just the interior of a huge-ass house, la. but mm, we mm. don't know what the house looks like. Yeah. But, uh, but don't, I mean, uh, so we talked about whether, you know, we should begrudge any politician that stays in a nice place or what, la, right? 
Yeah. Uh, and and I think we're both saying that actually it's it's uh that's a that's a bit of a harder to to say uh, give a blanket yes or no like, right. Mm. But um, I think for me the the bigger question mark is about yeah the the procedural process like that. SLA has been has said were you know everything was performed in full compliance like, right with SLA procedures. Um, because I think Kenneth Jaranam did raise the point like, that um, given that the SLA is a stat board under the Ministry of Law, and Shamugam is our Minister of Law, like, right? Mm. Uh, doesn't it strike? Does it strike everyone as a bit of a conflict of interest that uh, a state-owned property, you know, is rented out to, to uh, you know, a government official, like, right? And yeah. given the sensitivity about about this, because you want to eradicate any potential conflicts of interest, shouldn't it? Shouldn't this whole process be a lot more transparent, uh? Which is where I would say that the SLA statement to me was uh, very weak, uh, The SLA mm. statement. It, it sounds like it's just giving a bunch of facts, but um, yeah, it's not a full picture. And the SLA statement basically ends with like, yeah, you know, there'll be more information provided on the next parliamentary session, uh, which is like, yeah, it means that SLA is not not saying that it has to be independent, but it's almost like it doesn't want to answer uh, a lot of questions or, or handle any more media inquiries uh, as an agency itself, lah. It wants yeah. to leave it to leave it to the ministers to explain it in parliament, lah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so so that's where the SLA statement also felt a bit weird. Like, um, mm. the fact that it's going to come out in July, which is okay, two months away. Um, mm. yeah, and and Jeronam actually posted quite a few blog posts. Um, he mm. cited uh, an article by the Online Citizen, which again I know is not not the the best news source to to quote, but apparently mm. they had sent queries to SLA about rental uh rental payments being made. To mm. black and white houses previously, and there was no answer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and the fact that Long Man Wai brought it up also last year, um, and was shut down by Shamugam, it's just, it's I understand it's a stat board under Ministry of Law, but it just like what you say, like if it, it feels like, ugh, mm. it's a bit, it's a bit weird, like It's a bit, it's mm. a bit tough to just be like, okay, you know, this is just a baseless claim, and mm. it just puts questions in people's minds, lah. Mm. No, if, if anything, I'm just saying that the SLA should, if anything, be giving more information. Yeah, less, exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. And then in Parliament, if there's any anything else to add, you know, on the side of, uh, from the ministers or the, the people who've rented the place, right? I think mm. they can add it in their, in their personal capacities as members of Parliament, right? Yeah. Um, but it's it's strange that the agency seems to be deflecting to the minister's statement in Parliament. Rather than coming out and giving the the facts themselves, uh. yeah. Although you, they would argue, they say they've given all the facts here, uh, and and you know they they went through a few facts, but it just feels like uh, uh that that you know there still could be more um more information that is provided for people to actually see. Hey, is there any is there any issues like, right? Yeah, because yeah. Uh, uh, apparently, like for SLA, you can see the. The, the the tenders being like uh, bidded on I think for up to six months in the past mm, uh, mm. but both of them got their, got these properties like um, more than six months ago la. so then mm. the question is also oh why, why are those those rentals uh, or bidders not put up mm. so yeah. especially I mean, if, it, if it was public yeah. information before yeah uh, why not you know put it up again la, you know to shut people down la, right yeah and then even like there is the other question like have you been in one of those huge ass black and white houses uh no I don't think so I no. was I, I was at a shoot once in one of those black and white houses and mm. um, I mean it's beautiful and all but they are old buildings so mm. typically like the pipes suck there's no air con it's hot as fuck mm-hmm. um, it looks beautiful la. so one of the things that SLA did say that um, why the rental rates for black and white houses tend to be lower is because yeah, like, they they are not maintained as well. Mm. Uh, and I have uh, one f- a couple of friends who have rented black and whites in the past, like smaller ones, and yeah, it's there's a lot of maintenance. Like. So then the question is, oh, but if these were not used for six years and four years respectively, chances are there'll be a lot more maintenance and, and renovation required. Like. Yeah, yeah. So then there is another question like, oh, you the pictures and all they look very very taken care of mm, so then mm. it's like mm, what's yeah. what's going on yeah and uh 
I mean, the other thing I also take issue with in the SOE statement is that they said uh, Mr. Shamugam notified a senior cabinet colleague that he was making a bid for the property. Uh, they don't specify who is this senior cabinet colleague, mm. uh, but they're saying that because he told a senior cabinet colleague, I think the what they're saying is that oh, there was it was someone senior in parliament was aware. Uh, but again, we're not sure what that that level of awareness is. Was it like a casual conversation? Was it a written, was it a written statement or something? You know, because at the end of the day, like if you work in corporate world and all that, right, and and having worked in a bank and all these kind of things, um, yeah, that any time you are doing any kind of transaction or business, uh, that with uh with an entity that you are somewhat involved in within, right, that means like mm. a subsidiary company or subsidiary arm of the bank or or uh, even a client of your bank and things like that, you have to be 100% transparent with any interactions with them, right? Mm. Especially if it involves uh, money or anything like that. Um, you know, Even buying a share, buying a stock that is of a, you know, one of the bank's clients and things like that, you have to declare how much you bought, even if it's like a small amount or anything like that. And then, mm. then these are things that uh, cost people their jobs like, in the private sector, right? Mm. You know, the the lack of transparency in the, you know. So, yeah, I feel like if if everything was done above board, as SLE said, they could can afford to be more specific about some of these things like, in their statement, which are a bit disappointed they're not. And uh, they seem to have left it for for Shamugam and, and uh, Vivian Balakrishna to explain in Parliament, like, which like you said, yeah. is still is taking place in two months' time, which is, uh, wow, that's a, a long time for, for a statement from a government agent. Uh, for them to prepare something right to say yeah and I mean what you said also is true like recently I opened up uh, I was testing one of those brokerage accounts you know mm. what they asked me does your family member do this you got any yeah. fam- family member who works in this then I'm like I just want to like even if I want to spend $20 on stocks you fucking <laughs> asking me to <laughs> dig deep into my family history and I like, yeah. think oh would well, that person is through marriage does it consider immediate mm. family you must google what does immediate family defined by by the yeah. SEC and all that kind of shit. And and yeah. it's true because I have heard of people like like even from, from talking to you, um, you almost need to be extra cautious mm. when you are dealing with uh someone or, or, or sensitive uh nature less, of work. less than I mean the term is arm's length uh transaction and all that, right? You yeah, you have correct, to try to maintain arm's length away from, from anybody that, that could be seen as conflict of interest like if you have a relationship uh, uh, you know, financial relationship with the person, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking in a hypothetical situation, let's say uh, Shamugam said, hey, you know, I, I like the property. Like, I think I'm going to put in a bid. Mm. And then mm. you are at your computer, you get his bid and it's below the the market. Mm. <laughs> what are you going to go and tell him, uh, sir, your bid is not high enough. Yeah. Mm, so, mm, so I know that that is how like it could be a comedy scene in a in a yeah. fictional sitcom, yeah. but it does feel like, ooh, that's that's a little um a little juicy A little juicy. And when things mm. are juicy, people will bite. Whether it's but, true, but his bit, it's not true. his bit was higher lah, right? Than the I mean, that's what they said. That's what they said. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what they said. Which is which was not disclosed to him. So yeah, you I I I think we can take we can for, at this point take the SLA statement as like okay, there is an official statement. You know, mm. Canada Canada Jai Ratnam's post is still an individual's perspective. This is an official statement. You mm. know, this is going to be discussed in Parliament, which is good. Yeah. Um. Uh, the, it's nice that they said it will be provided during the next parliamentary session. Mm. So it's not even like there. it can be questioned. They they have committed to providing it. So yeah. I assume there'll be more info. But then the question is, why you need two months? Yeah. And Leong Manwa is probably like... Yeah. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> rubbing his hands in glee and uh, getting ready. Uh, you know. Yeah, but... setting, up, uh, set, setting up his ops, ops panel with all the red, uh, red string and all that. Mm, yeah. I mean, yeah, so it's a it's a developing story, but I think it's a, uh, yeah, I think people are talking about it. People on the ground, you know, over the weekend, just I just hear a lot of casual chatter about it. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the, the the big question here is like, yeah, the SLA's role in everything as well. That's that to me is the bigger question than whether a minister can stay in a expensive property and things like that, lah. Yeah, then suddenly now also people who have who who like to go for walks to just look at GCBs. I think I've actually walked walk along that area 
Because mm. I remember looking at these houses. Maybe it wasn't this house, but some of the GCBs, mm. it's like, you want to go and look at the GCB also, there's no point because the GCB is so, the building is so far in that yeah. you can't see shit. Yeah, um, yeah. And I always used to wonder like, what? How how does one live in a place like this? Mm-hmm. So I think maybe, we, uh, we've also had the, we, we've also looked at some of these properties on SLA site before, but more for renting them for shoots uh, and things like that, yeah, right? Yeah, correct, correct. I remember there was the, the airport at one point that we were looking at, I think the mm. old airport in Kanan. Mm. Then we went to look at the facility, we walked around, and yeah, it's the truth, man. That place is not like no toilets, yeah. no lights. <laughs> no electricity. No electricity. Literally, you will have to bring a whole army of people to clean up the place if you want to use it even for a weekend or something. So it's a it's an army of work to to get it, to make it livable, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, you know, the, there is that consideration that um, because it's, it's, it's pretty much like almost an abandoned uh, property, la, right? That maybe that factors into the cost of the place. Yeah. Uh, but I think, again, yeah, it's, it's not so much about the cost of the place, but I think the procedures and whether the procedures were adhered to, that's what we, we everyone's really scrutinizing. La. Yeah. But, but, you know, on that note, it's true. Like, even to rent the Kalang Airport at that point in time, mm. the rental was damn cheap. Yeah, and we're like, was. wow, we're going to save budget. Well, fuck <laughs> yeah, man. Then by the time we calculate how much you need to do generator, how much you need to bring in portable toilets, yeah. how much yeah. clean up, how much this, we're like, oh my god. It was more than the rent. Yeah, it yeah, cost more than the rent to most, shoot there for a few times, days. Yeah. Yeah. And in the end, we didn't go because we just uh, rented another place that was a private establishment that was expensive, mm. but it was still cheaper overall. Yeah, 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 correct. So, Mm-mm-mm. yeah, the, the, I, I think, yeah, just understanding what these black and white houses are is also important in, in uh, not colouring your your perception of the debate or so, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. But yes, cool. yes. talking about colouring perception of the debate, uh, mm. a lot of people who were expecting to, you know, be flooded with black and pink goodness over the weekend ended up seeing red. And uh, why is that so? Uh? Um, Because... I mean, they, Blackpink recently performed in Singapore for the first time in four years. Mm. Um, and if you haven't heard of Blackpink before, um, I mm. think you should... Um, I have no idea why sure. you would not have heard of Blackpink before. <laughs> uh, even okay. if you are not a K-pop fan, I'm pretty sure if I asked my mom, uh, do you know what Blackpink is? She wouldn't just say two colors. You know, she'd mm. be, oh, it's a music thing or something. Um, mm. They had the concert and... There were people who were posting that, oh, it was cool and all, but there were also a good number of people posting about negative experiences they had. Mm, And one of the things was that people cannot see anything because everybody's holding up their phones. Mm, mm. Everybody's holding up their phones. Uh, I know some people shared stories of like how when you're in a mosh pit, oh, actually, you know, just keep thinking, someone we've had on our podcast. Yes, yes, yes. She shared a TikTok about her experience in a mosh pit, which made her never want to go to a mosh pit before because it said it, yeah. it makes you the most evil person you can be. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but yeah, la, so so I mean, it's just one of those things that, that oh, are more people happy than unhappy? Like, do you know anyone yeah. personally who went for the concert? Uh, I mean, I know people who went. Uh, I mean, it was all over mm. the social media and everything. Uh, mm. Being part of the Blink, the Blink army or Blinkies or whatever you call mm. it. Um, but yeah, it was uh, like 50,000 people a night, man. That really, you think about it, that's 100,000 people in two days, right? Yeah. Uh, that's a significant chunk of the population that was there, right? Watching the concerts. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, it's just, uh, you know, they a lot of them were complaining that they paid nearly $500 for VIP experiences. Ooh. But mm. they ended up just seeing people's phones. But um. And then uh, there were also some complaints that Singaporeans got no concert etiquette, lah, so to speak, mm. when it came to using their phones and all these things. But um, do you feel sorry for, for these people who didn't get to enjoy the concert? Lah? That's what I want to ask you. Uh, I mean, when they <coughs> say that they couldn't see it because people were holding up their phones, that one, I... Tough to feel sympathetic. Lah. Why? Um, because... You That's height almost... privilege. That's height privilege, dude. Height privilege. But you, in this day and age, if I tell you, Terence, you're going to go to a concert and you might see people holding up their phones that might obscure your view. Your view. If you tell me, huh? Mm. What? How? Tell me, Terence, wake the fuck up, lah, okay? <laughs> how, can, how can you be surprised at that? It is expected. Yeah. So when you go there and 
you see that happening, I don't mm-hmm. feel sorry for you, lah. Do you? Mm. Um, in fact, I would say that concerts in Singapore already much tamer than concerts in the other places that I've been to. Uh, like in where? the sense that, uh, I mean, whether it's in the US or or uh, or you know parts of Europe or so now you, know, you got concert privilege so, lah. got concert privilege, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm I'm yeah. saying that Singaporeans in general we are um quite we're really not that uh confrontational or or that rough lah when it comes to the things that we do in concerts. Mm. Um, whereas like. A lot of times, and I've been to concerts in other countries, um, there's a lot of alcohol, usually. Mm. Uh, pushing, shoving, fights breaking out, people fainting, things like that. Uh, I've seen a lot more of that elsewhere than in Singapore, lah, right? Mm. In fact, in Singapore, sometimes I see the strange things I see is that uh, the front rows of, of certain concerts I've been at, where, you know, it's a big pop star performing something. The people in the front row, for some reason, don't want to stand up, lah, right? They just want to sit down. And not and not like uh stand up and dance and, and things like that. So actually, I, I felt that Singaporeans in some ways are more reserved and and that's why concerts in Singapore are actually less fun than, than concerts elsewhere, lah. Mm. Uh, so I'm quite surprised that anyone who goes to this Blackpink concert would would say that the concert etiquette in Singapore is no good and things like that because yeah, it, I mean, I can't imagine with it being a lot better elsewhere, lah. Mm, so you're saying there's snowflakes, is it, Terence? Uh, yeah, lah. In in the sense that you know how Singaporeans, we always sort of uh, because we we're in a very safe bubble that we live in, mm. we kind of underestimate what how the rest of the world is and how how dangerous it can be out there and all that, right? Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, th- this past year and everything, we literally have seen stampedes, very fatal stampedes in places like Indonesia, Korea, and things like that. Yeah, and yeah. these aren't even concerts, lah, right? Uh, and a lot of times after these things happen, there's a lot of inquiries as to why couldn't more measures be taken, you know, have happened to protect people and all. And, and you're kind of glad Singapore, in some ways, we, we do that, lah, right? With a, a lot more things a lot more things in place to to do manage crowds and all. Mm. So I, I, I don't see it as something that uh, anyone can criticize as the, whether it's the infrastructure or, or the fact that, you know, they... they they, you know, that Singapore is a bad place to see a concert. La. So you're saying that it's not, say, a, a Singapore thing that, oh, we don't know how to behave at concerts. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, because, I mean, even looking at the article where you can see a, a photo of, like, uh, people holding up their phones and blocking the thing, but the person mm. who took the photo was using their phone also. <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. then, then, like, I mean, I... No matter who I like, you know, I'll be very careful whether I order something, uh, get a ticket for a mosh pit or something. Even mm. if like, wow, my, the, I'm not a big person. I'm not that tall. Mm. The mm. experience will suck. If I was like yeah. six foot five or something, then I'd be like, fuck yeah, man, mosh pit all the time. So, yeah. so that's why like the, the concerts that I've been to in the past in Singapore, uh, it's almost the part of freestanding where you have space, you know? Yeah, yeah. Do I need to be like 50 meters away from the stage? Honestly, mm. like even if I'm like a hundred meters away from the stage, it's still it's still there at the concert, lah. Yeah, um, yeah. At least you got room to move. So when I see people complain that oh, you know, like like just keep thinking her post was just admitting that okay, mosh pits not her thing, that's mm, fine. Mm, but yeah. when people say oh, people are using their phones and all that, hard to sympathize. Lah, hard to sympathize. Yeah, cause. Ultimately, yeah, you know, I think I've been to concerts where I'm in the the standing or freestanding area, and I've I realized that for me, ninety percent of the time, I I move to the back of the crowd, you know, mm. away from the the stage or whatever, and yeah, like, it, it sounds counterintuitive, like right, like why would you do that if you're paying to be in the freestanding area too, so that you can be closer to the artist and all, but a lot of times I feel like if you are being crushed and like sweaty armpits all around you and and you can barely breathe, and it's so hot, especially this couple, this weekend, right, it's so hot, then how are you even enjoying the concert already, you know? Mm. Uh, to me, the concert nowadays, concerts is more about, especially for something like Blackpink in the National Stadium, it's more about the atmosphere and, and being there with people that, that that's what you're enjoying, like, right? Not not the, the, what, being able to be like 10 meters away from your favorite artist and things like that. That's not the environment to, to be thinking about that, like, right? Yeah. So yeah. You know, I mean, okay. So maybe maybe uh, like 
if you okay, it's, if a hundred thousand people went over two days, that's a shit ton of people. Uh. What mm. if they are just people who this is their virgin concert experience for a global mm. superstar, yeah. and they're going through the rite of passage that any like a lot of people go through where your first concert you're like, oh shit, should I have bought these tickets? Mm. Because mm. I can imagine if you're a diehard Blackpink fan, you're young, yeah. maybe you've never gone to a concert before, you want to get close as as much as possible, but. After yeah. you go for a few, you realize, okay, what kind of concert goer are you? Are you willing mm. to just be in in like eye level with other people's armpits and 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 all that? Good yeah. for you. But if you're not, you want something that's more space. You want to sit down, then you mm. get a different tequila. Mm. Maybe it's because of that. Yeah. So I, I what you're saying is just, uh, I mean, they're all just young people who've never been to that many concerts, so <laughs> they're still they don't understand that this is just this is just part of it, lah, Right, the part of the experience. Is yeah, it's part of it, like it's part of it, and like you have to kind of like you, it's part and parcel of the process, uh, yeah. of going to concert. I've been to a bad concert. What was mm. one concert I went? I I remember I went to the Bruno Mars concert when he came to Singapore a few years ago, mm. Mm. and it was damn short. It was like an hour. Like we went for dinner oh, after geez. that. Um, wow. but I think the reason why I ended up going for the concert is because me and my friend, we went for the Foo Fighters or the Coldplay mm, and we're like, mm. this is fucking awesome. Any concert in Singapore, we're going to go. And then we just snapped up the Bruno Mars thing, which I regret. La. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and now tickets are, are just uh, crazy, la, the prices for tickets these days. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not as bad as the situation in the US where I hear they have dynamic pricing for a lot of like big concerts like Taylor Swift and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so people that's like airlines la, right? like yeah, airline tickets or like, like your grab like that la, dynamic pricing oh a lot of people are buying the tickets now oh it's now it's 200% higher than what it was before yeah. Uh, so yeah concerts just not a very fun experience anymore I think for anyone and uh, unfortunately maybe concerts are a thing of uh, like being able to actually enjoy these mass concerts and all uh, to me that's a, a thing from the past already a relic of the past yeah for you la, for you la, maybe yeah, for me, if you if you really want to go for those mainstream big artists and all, it's like, you know, like either you suck it up and you know that you're going to pay a lot for a pretty shitty experience or you just, you know, basically go in open-minded and just, yeah, this is, I know this is what it is and then, you know, I'll just, I'll just, I'll take it for what it is. Or you yeah. become diehard fans of smaller artists. Where, but, you know, it's, I, I mean, if, if it's, if you're a diehard fan of smaller artists, at some point, they're going to be, you know, they'll get more and more more and more uh, fans then as well. Then you like, change lah. Then you change. The, yeah, moment, they they, change, they, the moment they start doing 50,000 people concerts, you're like, okay, I need to move on lah. Yeah. I need yeah, to move yeah. on. Yeah. Which is, which is something, yeah lah, it's something that uh, to think about lah. Like the, I mean, this is the, this is the music industry now, right? Where most mm. of the, a lot of what the revenue that an artist makes is not from like the, it's not from selling CDs or anything before. And streaming doesn't get them a lot of money. It's from you, the concert goer, that they make most of their profits already. La. Yeah. Right. But I mean, so, now, now it feels like Blackpink is like everywhere to the point I'm like, oh my God, walk in the airport also. I feel like I get to know them more than like uh, like the person I'm traveling with also. Yeah. Uh, they're just everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. You land in Penang also, same thing, everywhere. These concerts, yeah. like 100,000 people in two days. It's insane, man. Like, uh, does, it, but it's, does that surprise you? That they are that popular, yeah. I mean, when when in the past have we seen like someone from Asia become this globally popular? Mm, that's true, right? Yeah. I, I think probably Blackpink is is. I mean, we've we've had BTS and all, but Blackpink just their global appeal is like, and also because they are ambassadors for a bunch of like cosmetic brands and shit mm. like that. So they are literally mm. everywhere. Yeah, and um, yeah, yeah it's a. Uh, is 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 a lot like I don't know whether they are they 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 also are reaching the point where they they are so big that that people are like, oh okay can we get something new la? I I don't know man but yeah I think I, I think there's a a big part of it is the the fan the fan groups as well like, right the mm. super fans who who come together and and they you know they they share messages and exchange merchandise and things like that and. They're basically like those good old fan clubs uh, back in the day. Mm. But to, uh, to you know, amplify with social media and all these other tools that they used to keep in touch. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I can, I can only imagine if something like, uh, this reveals our age again, uh, something like mm. Spice Girls, you know, uh, if back in the day there was social media and all that, uh, right? 
they mm. probably would also become like you know oh, yeah, very 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 big. And they were they were the world's biggest uh, group at one point, but yeah. uh, there wasn't social media and it wasn't so easy to get around as it is today and organize world tours and things like that. Mm. So um, yeah, it's a uh, it's quite crazy to see all this coming together. And, and you know, I I feel sorry for those people who who's Con- first premium if their first concert experience uh their first premium concert experiences came out like that so, so, but so uh, you feel sorry only for the for the first timers like everyone is like I don't give a shit. I think everyone you, you kinda know where it's going already la. Yeah. Concerts yeah. are getting more expensive. They're getting the experience is gonna be, you know, more and more inferior because yeah, la, they they need to make turn a profit la, right somehow. Yeah. From yeah. from the concert and not from oh you watch a concert, you enjoyed it, then you go and buy the C D. There isn't that buy the CD element of things already. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, correct, correct, correct. Yeah, like for the first time was I have a little bit more. I mean, I wouldn't say I feel sorry for that. I'm like, yo, man, mm. this is the real concert world, man. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, Wake up right. your idea and figure yeah. out what kind of concert goer you are. You are. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I actually was at a concert over the weekend. Mm. So something, uh, a small concert that's plenty. Uh, and, you know, uh, it was a, it's a French jazz artist mm. who is actually based out of Singapore and uh, it was great a great concert I was sitting in my seat all the way mm. <laughs> I still enjoyed it a lot uh, you know there was no screaming it was in aircon I enjoyed it a lot uh. so <laughs> you contrast that with uh, yeah. <laughs> with what these Blackpink people are going through that I feel bad for them more, that sounds a lot more compelling for me also <laughs> yeah and the tickets well, were about that I think the tickets awesome. were tickets were $35 a person or something like that you know uh. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, actually, Esplanade, Esplanade does some interesting shit. Like. Yeah, yeah. So if That's you're able to get off that Blackpink bandwagon and mm. explore artists outside of your of the of your usual diet, uh do give it a try. Like. You you might yeah, you might be pleasantly surprised that and you the might, fun that you could have. Yeah. You might end up sitting next to Terrence. <laughs> yeah. Which 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 sounds like a great <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I promise I won't hold a phone in front of your face. Like. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Cool, man. Cool. cool. All right. Yes. Uh. So then, so we can move on to the one show comment. And yeah. what is what is your one show comment, man? Uh, my one show comment is from uh, a response about the episode three ninety five on our Reddit. Leong Man Wai asked for one million dollars for MPs, and Edwin Tong defends life audition and buskers. Uh, I think Majestic Economist six. Uh, you know, he jumped on the pun that I think we were making, where we, he said he was thinking about this, he and was thinning, he about was thinning, yeah. thinking, 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 uh, Thin, talking thinking, about, yeah. yeah, talking about MPs having uh, jobs outside of uh, being members of parliament, lah, right? Uh, yeah. So yeah, but I think he was, um, he you know, he had some interesting points to make about how, you know, he's not doubting that MPs are very busy and have a lot of work to do. But if MPs have time to, uh, if some MPs have time to, to handle a full time job, that often means that the MP work is only in the evenings and weekends. Uh, so is it true that an MP, an MP or NNC MPs work is really only fifteen percent of MPs? You know, given mm. that the MP is doing it outside of the official work hours, lah, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, definitely worth considering paying them a little bit more. Uh, and yeah, he throws in a lot more deliberate puns in there like he says it's definitely worth considering paling them a bit more oh. <laughs> oh. see I see what you did not, there it was just the economist not bad huh? oh yeah. nice nice yeah cool um, okay my, my one short thing is a comment on uh, the podcast 396 the last one where we spoke mm. about the hijab wearing worker who sells pork at a pasta malam mm. um, a user book and cook uh, pointed out something a uh, very good uh, analogy that, that makes a lot of sense uh, basically they wrote if by simply having pork makes a workplace not halal then what about a supermarket cashier mm. uh, if you buy pork you know like supermarkets they sell pork if the mm. cashier is wearing a tudung you mm. can assume that um, she is Muslim or, or he is Muslim but that doesn't mean that they won't carry out the job what, right mm. Or that, so, or that the supermarket doesn't sell pork, right? Yeah. So I was like, yeah. hey, actually, that is a good way of thinking about it. That, yeah. So yeah, cheers, cheers for that comment. And and also just want to give a shout out to uh someone when my wife and I were at the airport last Thursday waiting for our flight. Mm. 
uh, I saw some some guy walking towards me. Like I was like, hey, this guy looks familiar. Uh, do I know him? But then he just came to say that he he's been listening to the podcast since <coughs> the first episode. <coughs> Uh, wow. And how how he listens to us while gymming lah, because uh, mm. he was a pretty well built guy. So shout out to you, man. That made my that made my uh, a day it, the last few hours in Singapore before going Penang. You guys uh, name or anything like that first name or whatever? Uh, I mean just like uh, I mean I mean he he's probably listening to this, so mm. so I'll I'll leave it at that lah. Okay, okay. So shout out to the the Jack guy. Yeah, yeah, the spoke jacked to guy. Yeah, <laughs> spoke to Harish at the airport. Okay, the jacked guy who's who's working out as he listens to this. Got uh, it. Thanks, got man. It, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, yes. Cool. And uh, and now one for the for the one show thing. Yeah. Do you want to go? Sure. Uh, I I mean I finished watching the Expanse. So now, mm. which was really like a fucking amazing show, and now I'm having Expanse withdrawal and looking for my <laughs> next show. Uh, I chanced upon the show on Netflix called Sanctuary. Mm. which is set in the world of sumo wrestling in Japan. Mm. Uh, and, I mean, it follows, like, this young punk who's, you know, like, just taking care of his dad. His dad gets into an accident. Uh, his his wife and dad separated years ago, and now he's, like, in his early 20s and just falling into the dark side of society. And then he's forced to join this sumo stable. And mm. it's just his journey of, I guess, eventually becoming a champion. And it's quite it's quite watchable. Like. I know some of the reviews said, <clears throat> oh, you know, like the story, the pacing a bit abrupt, but because it really anchors itself in the world of sumo wrestling, which I've always found fascinating. Mm. I think it's quite interesting. Uh. It's it's a nice watch so far, two episodes in. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Sanctuary. <coughs> you? Uh yeah, my my one show thing is also a new show that I just started watching recently. It's a uh, Succession mm. on HBO. Um yeah, it's about it's about a story of a you know a rich uh, media mogul who is um, having health issues and they're talking about how his family is dealing with the succession plans for his business empire. Mm. So sounds like a very serious drama, you know, family drama and all, which it is. But what surprised me is that it's actually really funny as well. Oh, like, yeah. like it just yeah, there's a lot of parts in it that are really comedic and uh, maybe also because. It's just a you know a crazy rich family dealing with uh crazy crazy family problems, so it just there's a lot of points where actually I'm laughing out loud as rather than like oh my god it's so serious and all that uh. yeah oh I never knew because so, I've always I've heard many good things about it but I never heard that it's funny yeah 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 I do uh, yeah I mean if we go into the weeds a little bit about about it I if it, it's cool because I think. Every even even the very impactful scenes and all that, I think the showrunners or uh, writer directors, they they take a lot of efforts to always try and diffuse the tension a little bit in every scene by by ending with a funny quip or something funny that happens, uh, you know, or something mm. that something someone reacting to the outlandish situation. I'd be very curious to know if those those parts were really scripted and or were they improvised on the spot, because. Uh, Cause some of them are really funny, right? yeah. Or are you just like that annoying guy in the cinema when someone gets shot on screen? You just burst out laughing. No, 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 no I'm not. I'm not. Absolutely not. I'm not. Do you watch guy. it with someone else? No, no, I'm watching it myself. Yeah, you're watching it yourself. Yeah, yeah. Just Interesting, but but I've heard I've heard many good things about it, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just started it, so maybe I. It, uh, but so far it's been pretty good, like, Yeah. Cool, man. Cool. Cool. All, All right. right. Uh, good start to the week. Uh, yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll talk to y'all soon.